Schumacher with a high fly ball in a deep right field. At the wall, and it's gone! Skip Schumacher, his first home run this year. Cabrera is thinking three. Throw by Schumacher. Hustling in and diving catch. Oh, what a play. Schumacher. In the air to left, well hit. What a team. What a ride. The Cardinals are world champs in 2011. All righty. The round table. I, I think that's what we could call this pod. We'll talk Marlins, and because it's the whole staff is here. We have John from All Marlins, and obviously doing a lot here for the Chaos Sports Corner. So he's obviously editing this video, and he puts out the articles for us. And then we have Sean, our Dolphins beat writer, and um, he obviously knows a lot, a lot about the Marlins. He's been on Fish Stripes Live. He's been on Fish Stripes Jeopardy. Makes up these crazy questions for us on Jeopardy, so we're happy <laughs> just, to have just to piss off Isaac. Let's just only... piss off Isaac. <laughs> no, uh, no. Uh, not tell me you said that, but I'm excited to have you both on. As you can see from John's background, the Marlins have a manager. We we around I would say three thirty, maybe four o'clock Eastern time. The Marlins, Craig Mish, our good my good our good buddy Craig Mish announced uh, that the Miami Marlins are hiring Skip Schumacher as your next manager for the Miami Marlins. Um, as we all know, Don Mattingly, the Marlins did not, um, they decided to not extend his contract and renew it or even make a new one. And Donnie decided for a new voice, Skip Schumacher, former MLB player. He won a championship. He won a world series with um, the Cardinals, two of them as John could see, as John put out there and Sean as well. In 06, he was not a part of the playoff roster, but he still got the ring because he played. Then in 2011, he was a part of that roster and he, he was a part of that team. But then it went to LA. He he was under Don Mattingly, actually. He was a player for Don Mattingly in 2013. So this guy's very, very young. He's 42 years old. And just for context, Albert Pujols, I believe, was also 42 or allegedly is 42 years old. So um, let's start with John. What are your thoughts on Skip Schumacher? I know... I guess for many of us, and also when you look at Marlins Twitter and what they wanted, it was Joe Espada. Yes, very good option, but Schumacher is probably as good as it gets as well. There, you know, you could put him up on that tier with, um, with Espada and then the other candidates. Just to kind of keep you guys in the in the in the I guess informed here is that the other finalists were Macquatara, who is the uh, Tampa Bay Rays bench coach, and then Luis Rojas, the mystery candidate. Uh, Yankees third base coach, former Mets manager. You guys know why he's no longer with the Mets. It's now Buck Showalter, but John Schum- Schumacher, new guy in town here in Miami. We could call him Skip. He's the skipper. So that that's an easy way to address him now. Skip the skip. Welcome yeah. to Miami. Um, I like the sign. I like the hiring. I, I I think to me he came as a surprise candidate. Because when we were looking at all the names, you know, we were, I mean, Kevin, you remember when we were on the show last time, we were naming guys like Madden. Um, Wild, I think Sean, yeah. Sean brought up um, Renicky from the Brewers. He also brought up Craig Council. Yeah. Craig um, Council. So now we're here. We know who it is. I was a big advocate for Espada. I know many fans on Twitter were out as well. But you got to look at this guy and... And the same same as Espada, because many people were noting on the fact that he has no managerial experience, but neither does Espada. Espada only managed no, he winter does, he ball. Does, he does, he does. He, winter he, ball, right? He, he did a World Baseball Classic as well. Yeah, yeah. So it's more than Schumacher, I'll say that. Right, but you you know you got to give credit here to Shu, who's been in the league in his career for eleven years, and I I believe he's like one of the quickest players to go from player to manager. In just a small uh, small sample of years, he's only 42 years old. Um, he was the bench coach for the St. Louis Cardinals, a, a team with a lot of 
you know, positivity in their clubhouse from what it looks like. Very fun team to watch this year. I th- And I think part of that is really something that Skip is going to bring to this clubhouse. We saw a lot of stir this year with the Marlins in that clubhouse, and many people could back me up on that, people who have actually been in the clubhouse like Kevin. But that's besides the point. With Skip, um, I said it, 42 years old. Players are young. He's in a – something that I feel that the players are going to enjoy doing with Skip. I like that we could say Skip now. It just feels so great. Something that they're going to love to do with Skip is – that they're going to, they're going to be able to relate to him and likewise back like he's going to say hey back when i played but back when he played it was only what 5 years ago 6 years okay. ago so when you're looking back at skip you know it, it's it's a fun signing and another little detail that i wanted to bring up i saw this i think it was devivo who tweeted it out this is the first hiring the marlins have had with a person who has zero connection to the New York Yankees. So how about that? Oh, really? Ja- nice. Well, oh, well, with the new with the new regime you're talking about. Right, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, and okay. another thing, not only on Skip's um, Well, James side, Rossi didn't have any connections. thought he did. Huh. Did he? I have to look back. But yeah, another thing I wanted to do was... And Mel, Mel did. Mel did. I think yeah, he played. Yeah, yeah. Another thing is you got to give some credit here to Kim. I know many people have, you know, kind of gave, given her some backlash on a couple topics, but Kim interviewed around 13, 12 candidates for yeah. this position. This is about the most in Marlins history, probably, in terms of uh, managerial interviews. Like, she was actually committed and looking for the right person. So, the fact that she passed over Espada, she passed over Cotraro, she passed over um, all the other guys, Luis Rojas, as you, as you mentioned, and she, she picked Skip. There's just something about him, maybe his charisma, that's going to help this team uh, move forward. And I, I, I congratulate her on a very nice signing. I like this signing, and I mean that in an honest way. Another thing is, um, look what the Phillies have been able to do with Rob Thompson. That's a that's been a popular name, a young guy, and many people who, when the when the signing came up, they were like, "Who's this guy? Who's this guy?" Most of the time, something I've noticed is that the managers that we pretty much don't hear about are always the managers that kind of excel. Kevin Cash was a like average player catcher, came in as a manager, and look what he did with the Rays. He's done wonders. So good signing, and I'm gonna let Sean take it from here. Yeah, very quickly before I get to Sean here, we have to. I want to quickly mention that. Yeah, you're right, uh, John. This was a very, I'll tell you, it was a very thorough process, but it was very specific candidates because I, I asked Craig, and I, I'm, I'm sure at this point, after now, he can let me say this, but he did not. They did not interview Mark DeRosa. They did not interview Francisco Savarli, from what he told me. So those are two candidates I asked about, and he couldn't tell me at the time the day after. Literally, all of them dropped, but. Uh, the Marlins did drop a press release, and this is what Skip Schumacher said. I'm very excited and grateful that Bruce Kim and the Marlins organization have given me an opportunity to manage a very talented team, Schumacher said. Delivering a winning, cult- sustainable culture, sounds like Derek Jeter there, but we'll let that slide, <laughs> with the expectation of getting into the postseason is the next step uh, for this organization in South Florida, and I can't wait to get started. I really won't go into what Kim said because there will be a press conference next week. Um, just it'll be either on one of the World Series off days, so Thursday or Saturday is the expectation, or Sunday. I'm sorry, so probably Thursday, but we'll see. We know it's next week though. He will be introduced. We don't have to wait till the end of the World Series because his team is no longer in it. But Sean, uh, we spoke about it very, very briefly on the football in Florida. But um, your thoughts on Skip Schumacher? Yes, um, yeah. So Skip, and although I got to say that, but well, it's fun to call him Skip. The chaos agent part of me would love nothing more than for the first thing he says in the press conference to be, it, "It's Mr. Schumacher." <laughs> with her and just shut that Skip stuff down. That that would make my year. But uh, that's great to have, <laughs> great to have Skip aboard. A uh, real quick on James Rousen, Yankees ties for him on there. So you, so you're alive for being right. This being our only for non-Yankee now, I'll signing. Fi- I'll find the Yan- I'll find the non-Yankee on the Marlins. <laughs> <laughs> but it wasn't Rousey. Um Yeah, so th- this name did kind of come up, you know, rather quickly. But 
Exactly. I mean, you is the big thing. I think I heard today on on the Fish Stripes on pod that this is the third youngest manager hire in Marlins history. But compared to Mattingly, he's super, super young <laughs> with there. And so you're know, bringing that bringing that youth into the clubhouse. That's a big factor. You do see players responding to that. And you definitely with some of our personalities on this team and well, let's just say jazz. Um, you know, really counting on him buying into it. He gave this his social media blessing um earlier. So was glad to see that. Um for, for what excites me the most, I think, is that the Marlins are able to, you know, pretty clearly get their guy. I think is one of the takeaways from this is that, you know, as John noted, uh, you know, Kevin, you as well, a ton of people interviewed for this. This was a really detailed search that seemed like they were leaving no stone unturned. If you think of other Marlins manager hires in the past, I mean, hell, when they um, replaced Mike Redmond, all um, Jeffrey Loria did was hire the first person he saw in the hallway, right? When he made Dan Jennings the manager. Um, but they're like, so uh, on the grand scale of things, this was, this is great to see that, you know, deliberation and attention to detail. Um, and so you, as you know, as fans, you know, as people following this, we've got to believe that they know what they're doing, right? At at some level, that you know, if they did all this homework and this was the first manager that was hired, other than Bruce Bochy, I believe. Um, yeah, the Rangers yeah, dropped yeah. a big bag for him. So, of all the candidates, this is the one the Marlins determined they didn't have to get you know wait through a bunch of other teams to hire and then get their guy. So, this is apparently the best candidate the Marlins believe is best equipped to handle it. And so, you know, we get to be excited about that as, and I think that, I think that was important too. The optics of this are great and all the quotes that have come out, you know, um, Mish um, has, you know, our buddy there has shared a lot of comments about other people that have worked with Schumacher before seem really filled with them, you know, commenting on what a great, you know, baseball mind he is, personality, um, you know, good person to be around. And so we're hearing all the right things. And so I'm, I'm excited. Yeah. So this is the statement. I'm not going to read it. I'll let you guys read it for yourselves. That's why it's up there for the audience as well. That is watching this, not listening, but all right. So Christina put out a tweet, Christina Di Nicola, and it was actually a good tweet. I'll say that I was a fan of it. And it mentioned Mark McGuire <laughs> as a, as a possible staffy on, on, as a possible person on the staff for uh, Skip Schumacher, because we have to remind ourselves that Skip will be choosing his staff. He will be allowed to fire whoever he wants from the current Marlin staff, uh, as mentioned many, many times before. So, John, we saw this with Barry Bonds, but I believe that Mark McGuire does have a lot more coaching experience prior to this i know he was in la for a while as a hitting coach for three seasons i want to say um and i know i know correct i know this is christina once again that uh, she said that i believe schumacher and um geez and mcguire do have a pretty good relation relationship you know friendship so they're pretty close what would be your thoughts on a, a guy like mark <clears throat> McGuire? this would mean obviously you fire marcus tims after I, I mean obviously i think this he will go this is just my opinion I do believe he's gone, but you know, just your thoughts on that possibility and anyone else in mind because they're all, you know, obviously they're going to keep Mel. We know that Craig's optimistic. And then actually, we have to talk about one more Houston Astro possibility to, mm -hmm. to come to Miami. I, I think you know who I'm talking about. Um, with Mark McGuire. Um, <clears throat> yeah, you mentioned Barry Bonds. And before I get to Mark, um, I think his story is kind of like confusing to understand because from a side, Looks like Gloria and Samson didn't really like the guy. But on the other side, I don't know if this is real or not, but I read somewhere, Stanton Yelich talking about one of their uh, one of their biggest help to becoming home run type hitters has been thanks to Barry Bonds being well, able look, to I mean, look at Stanton, them. 59 right? homers that year. MVP. Mm -hmm. Well, that was the year after. But oh, I, was think, year after? Oh, shit. I think yeah. he learned from it, though. Like, he, he was able to acquire that... Uh, little tip that Barry gave him the previous season and he was able to use it to his advantage the very next year and look at the type of hitter he became and not only that look the year after look at Yelich Yelich also became a good hitter so now you start to think of it I don't know what Loria and Samson's relationship with Barry might have been but he looked like a pretty good hitting coach and for for Mark McGuire 
uh, this is a guy who has experience. He's been with the Dodgers, as you said. I think he was also with the Diamondbacks. That's another was the team. Diamondbacks? Okay. And the other reason why I remember that was a brawl when uh, both McGuire and another coach, I forgot who, were holding each other, each other's shirts like that. And it was when Ian Kennedy, I think, or Zach Grinke got hit in the head and the benches got cleared. It was, it was a big brawl back in like 2013, 14. But anyways... McGuire, skilled person, qualified for the job, Cardinal ties. So I think we're starting to turn from Yankee ties to Cardinal ties, I guess. <laughs> so I, like not, it. it, I was like, it's, it's better than the Yankee ties. In, in my opinion, I think that the Marlins should really look forward to being the next Cardinals, a team who's consistently in the chase, consistently in the chase. And honestly, as a fan, that's what I want from the team, right? I want to be in the chase. I want to be winning 80 games every single year. Even if we don't make the playoffs, I don't ask for much. I just ask for 80 win game seasons. Um, but anyways, back on the mark. I know I keep sidetracking from, from McGuire, but it, you know, it, it, I think it would be a very good hire, really. Uh, that should be a hire yeah, that the I mean, Marlins shouldn't miss out on. And as they say, every time a new manager comes in, he brings his guys in. So <clears> um, same thing Manley did. He brought Tim Wallach. Uh, Chad Wallach's father, the bench coach, uh, to his regime, and now we're having the possibility of having Skip Schumacher pick his guys. So, yeah. So McGuire, three seasons with St. Louis in LA as the hitting coach, bench coach for three seasons as with the Padres. So, oh, so he wasn't with the Diamondbacks. So it was him with the-, with the Dodgers doing it to one of the Diamondbacks. There you go. That's what it was. Probably. So, uh, Sean. First, I want to get your thoughts on Mark McGuire, but then there is a nice news out there. Oz Ocampo. I, th- I think that's how you say it. Yeah. Ocampo. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, assistant general manager. He was in, he was interviewed for that position. He's an executive with the Astros. Just, you look at the Astros and you think of Jordan, Bregman, that development that they've gone through with hitters. Yes, they missed on some pitchers, but, damn, you look at that rotation. Framber, you have Christian Javier, Justin Verlander. Very well developed rotation, you know. Besides Verlander, because he was already very, very good. He was probably one of the best pitchers in baseball when joining Houston. So, first, I want to get your thoughts on that possibility okay. of Mark McGuire and then Ozo Campo, because I know you were talking about that big splashy front office signing. Yeah, I know you saw. I saw your tweet on that as well. Well, obviously, with McGuire, there's some kind of you know ownership office pool going to get the most home runs hit by your coaching staff. Um, more than this, yeah, we just said we we have Bonds and McGuire run, like we're just gonna win for the decade unless yeah you know, someone hires A Rod and Griffey to uh, you know shore up and and another guy I guess <laughs> to um tack on some home runs there the but no I mean he definitely has much more coaching experience than Bonds I mean I guess at the end of the day my reaction to it, it's the same as it was with bonds when that you know even though that did seem to end a little a little bitterly for whatever reason but was that well cool it's you know one of the greatest hitters of all time you know didn't didn't need to use any uh enhancers to knock the baseball into orbit you know, surely he could pass on some useful knowledge um to and i would certainly be happy for anyone to share some advice on how to hit a home run with this marlins <laughs> roster um based on based on how things went last season uh so yeah, it's it's a good track record. I I definitely would be okay with the hire. One thing I'm you know, I guess interested in with as this coaching staff fills out is and maybe you guys be able to help me with this. Like what do you like like what do these other like coaches at the non manager level make? Like what's the percent like payroll difference? So like basically if we assume that as a first time manager or not managing before that Schumacher is not making the uh you know the Joe Madden money or the Joe Girardi mm-hmm. money out of or even the Mattingly money probably you know, on a contract, then should we expect the Marlins to be able to spend more on coaches now like, and get better coaches? Or is that really not like that big a deal financially, like what hitting coaches and pitching coaches make? The, uh, I, don't think I, I just don't have a sense of that. I don't know how much of a breaking point that'll be for some guys, obviously. I don't know, you know, for example, McGuire. I don't know what that'll be. Break- the guy's rich already. Uh, he'll definitely yeah. want some money, but I don't think he'll want, you know, the Mel- the money Mel Stonemeyer is about to get if the Martins bring him back. Because Mel, yes, it'll be about the money for Mel. He's really good at what he does, and they could offer him a 
spot in college, pitch, you know, college program or anywhere else closer to home, they offer him a, you know, very nice money, you know, a lot of money. And you know what a lot of money is. He, he, he yeah, will so go that's, right, that's mainly where I'm wondering if maybe that's, that's, that's a couple extra million now. that are now freed up for Mel or. Yeah, I don't, and I'll let John hop in on this now, but I don't really know how much of a breaking point it'll be. Obviously, they'll, these guys want to get paid, these coaches, for what they do, for the effort they put in, because they could obviously be with their families right now and they're deciding to coach and help these young guys out. But we'll, we'll have to see how much of a breaking point that really is for these guys. And then I'll let John hop in because we still have to talk about Ozo Campo, a uh, possible G, assistant general manager. I actually did not know they let go Dan Greeny. They're a uh, Kurt. They're oh, a they former. did. Yeah. yeah, they should. I mean, I don't know how many assistant general managers there are. I, I assume it's only one, but I, I did not know in that case they let him go. If if that's the case, I have no idea. I'll, I'll have to check. But to you, just if I can just say quickly with Ocampo, since you uh, since you asked, so that yeah, I guess that kind of splashy hire. I mean, that does stand out as so. Obviously, the Astros are the paragon of baseball, right? And how to run an organization right well, now. Um, stories, yeah. Maybe maybe we'll ignore the yeah. <laughs> Even without the sign stealing, <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, with there, that's just you know the talent level there is you know immense. Uh, there, are they going to lose a game <laughs> the, this whole postseason? Um, you know, Phillies are hot, but Astros are just great. That's how you build yeah. them. So that that is that splashy name. Um, you know, when I you know may first started making those comments, I was you know going higher up. I was wondering if. Yeah, I was wondering if maybe Kim was going to end up getting some oversight, but it, but it's you know very clearly you know you know her show to run right now, and you know she just she just made her manager hire, but with this still bringing in you know another voice, you know that's been absent. That's clearly been missing since Jeter left, since Denbo left. How useful were those voices when they were there the last year? Um, if they're even so, I'm you know, I'm excited to see what you know another voice can bring to the table, and what better voice to have than someone who had a hand in building the Astros organization. So I have no reason to be nothing but excited about that. Yeah, and then finally, the final still vacant positions are actually a couple minor league ones. I know one of them was your head scout. I don't know his name right now, and it sucks that I don't know it, but it was on the Herald. But uh, they let go of two big names, and that starts showing that they care about the development of this team. And I'll find that on the Herald now, but... Uh, John, just quickly, your thoughts on Ocampo, and then what do you want to look for in the new possibility of having these new this new role that they have to fill out now with the minor leagues? And I'll tell you right now what it is. Jeez. Uh, oh yeah, with with yeah. Oz Ocampo. Um, not familiar with the name, but just by the fact that he is, you know involved in that Astros organization. Sean mentioned it. <laughs> that team is just here it Incredible. is. Player, director of player development, Geoff De Groot, and professional scouting oh, De director, yeah. Hadi Rod. So, if that's how you said, I'm sorry if that's not how you say it, but those are the two positions that have to fill out. John, continue. Yeah. So, <clears throat> you know, the fact that he's a part of that amazing organization, man, the Houston Astros, they went from horrible team, if you remember the early 2010s, to an absolute powerhouse. And possibly on the verge of winning a World Series here in 2022 if the Phillies, um, you know, don't win it. But yeah, I think that's that's a that's a name you should be excited about, especially with those Astros ties. Another, once again, I like that they're drifting away from this whole it has to be connected to the Yankees in some capacity type movement that they kind of had for a few years. Then again, I think that's all under Jeter. But now that Kim runs the show, she likes to be a little bit more selective. She doesn't want to pick based on what their background is. She wants to pick more on who the better option is. And that's how it should have been from the very beginning. But now that we're in a tougher spot here with the possibility of this rebuild that has been very hyped up for the past few years, possibly going to the downsides of it, you know, actually failing, you know, the Marlins want to show that this, this, uh, this farm system still has hope through the, the fact that they could develop players is still possible so that, that that puts me to dwell onto this other position you were talking about with the minor leagues hopefully they find someone who is qualified experience doesn't have those yankee ties unless they're actually qualified for that job and able to bring us you know some sort of development 
And so sort of change to that minor league system in which gives us a little bit more sense of hope for these players actually coming up and panning out in in the major league level. So that's what I got on on that end. But so far, so good. I like what I'm seeing from the Marlins. I don't. I, I think one of the lessons I'm going to learn from last year that I don't want to that that I'm going to bring on to this year is not get myself a little bit too overconfident. The Marlins did a good job of doing that to me last year, and uh, I think I've learned my lesson on that end. But I got to give it to Kim. I've been saying this because man, the amount of garbage that I hear about Kim, and most of the time it's not even her, man. Like this, this is her actually now making the moves, and the moves that she's made since she started actually taking the helm have been pretty good. Groshan's pretty good. Um, Skip Schumacher, pretty good hiring, and I know he has no track record to follow it, but from the guy that he is, he's a, he's been able to at least give us an idea of what he's able to bring to the table. So he he I managed. Gotta, I, I believe he was an interim manager for like a day, but I, I don't think that really counts. But <laughs> um. Yeah, but before we wrap it up, um, anything else, Sean, you want to mention before we wrap this up? Um, just, you know, that they're, you know, they're checking all the right boxes so far. I mean, obviously, so that, that that next step is once we start, start getting into player acquisition, uh, and, you know, to kind of keep that train rolling, that this team is moving in a direction that, you know, fans should be excited about. They've got to either bring in, you know, one, you know, eye-catching, you know, name to you know, help if not, you know, if not two or, you know, and if it's one, then that's probably because they did an early extension for jazz, which I don't necessarily expect, but, but you need to see something like that. You need to see that big, yeah. you know, long-term extension for Chisholm or bring in a, you know, big offensive star, you know, from another team, whether that's free agency or a trade to be the, you know, kind of the third leg on this. We're going to call, okay, so we've got our Astro strategy guy, we've got our new manager and here's our, you know, new new thing, shiny Bingo. thing to go see, take yep. the field and go go play with. So that that part still needs to happen. And based on last off season, you know, that well hopefully they can execute that. Yeah. <laughs> with it. They... I wanted to add on yeah. on that because you bring up some amazing points on the fact that, you know, the team uh, could possibly bring in a jazz extension. I like that you actually mentioned that. He's got control, but there's been extensions now where they're actually buying out that control and giving te- uh, giving these players extensions. And I think that's a good thing to note because... Strider, Michael Harris. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, now with Jazz, a good spark plug, spark plug player, you know, ever since his absence, the Marlins season just completely went down the toilet. But I think that's... I think an extension to Jazz this, er- this early kind of brings the sense of hope to the fans that finally we're not going to be living in a time where the Marlins are going to undergo a huge fire sale again, which we're all sick and tired of. So they're actually showing commitment to keep these players. And finally, we're going to have, hopefully, long-tenured Marlins. For the fir- I think that's the first time I could say that in history because Lu- uh, Luis Castillo was how long ago? And I'm not talking about the one on the Mariners. <laughs> so, <laughs> Very long time ago. So... Got to give credit there when it's due. So I was hoping Castillo would come up because he's another. You know, I think he had two rings. He te- he got a ninety-seven ring, even though he didn't play yeah. in the postseason. <laughs> oh, <laughs> really? so just like, yeah, just like Skip. <laughs> yeah. there, so there got... All right, I was so, thinking of him earlier. Yeah, I think this is where we'll end it. Sean, we have to hop on your pod because we're gonna do. I believe it's a Halloween horror story. I believe it is. If you want to, yeah. That so we're gonna do. Let me get my pod back rolling on. Get, like, want to get you guys on for that we're going to do the marlins horror draft oh right there okay. so the pick and you know we'll each do our you know top five i think things to consider you know most horrific oh, you boy. know marlins you know <gasps> history whether it's a you know a trade a devastating loss you know saying the the existence of jeffrey loria um, <laughs> you want, um you know, i just, love it you know, pick and choose you know keep it keep it fun in the spirit of the um holiday season of halloween Marlins Horror Draft upcoming. Alrighty, and that's where we'll end it. John, you still have all Marlins. That that should be dropping soon. So you guys know what to look for. These guys, myself, Fish Stripes, Fish Stripes live tomorrow, uh, Wednesday. We're recording this obviously October twenty fifth on a Tuesday. We'll be talking about Schumacher if I'm on. I'll see if I'm on. And then uh, 
we'll do some nice someone will <laughs> someone will yeah we'll have some guys on isaac will be there i believe noah we'll see but finally the only other thing i'll mention is that i'm doing a part of elon lewis we're doing that off-season shopping list once again so we'll start with players of a 1.0 war and below so these are guys that we believe will bounce back so that's where i'll end it on myself for myself john sean we'll see you guys all next week probably talking some off season but we'll see what we'll do but yeah we'll yeah we'll end it here peace out and uh, go fish <laughs>